brand journalism can and should be used to save lives. I urge you to join me today as I take a much different approach with this video. I'm going to use the topic of our times to illustrate how brand journalism should be used in crisis communications by health professionals to provide information to the public about the coronavirus. I suspect that you, like me, have been frustrated by the confusing mixed messages you've been getting about the coronavirus for the last few months or even for the last few days. Some of that confusion can be resolved with more direct communication, like video brand journalism, from health professionals. Now more than ever, we need to hear directly from public health officials with real news that we can all use. So stick around until the end as we cover brand journalism to save lives. Let's go. Grow your brand, get your engagement up, but most importantly, tell your story. Using social media to the fullest potential. Story smart. Let's go. Welcome to Story Smart, the channel devoted to teaching you do it yourself direct storytelling like video brand journalism to grow your brand and build your brand community. I'm Ron Waterman. My friends, we are living through an extraordinary time. Our country, stop that, our world is experiencing the coronavirus pandemic. I'm taking a bit of a risk by covering this topic, but I feel strongly that what we're living through illustrates the importance of direct storytelling and direct communications. I believe fundamentally that you should be sharing your story first and best yourself using things like brand journalism before you're out there pitching your story to the media to tell it for you. It's a foundational belief because we live in the era of search. We all want and frankly expect to go directly to the source to get our information. From day one, that's what's been missing from this equation on the coronavirus situation. It is a conversation with my son and frankly some, of, some friends of mine who work with one of my clients that prompts me to do this video. I am frustrated. I am frustrated by the confusion and misinformation out there about the coronavirus. Nonsense, like it isn't any worse than the flu. Really, it isn't. It's a hoax. Really, it's a hoax. The government is overreacting. Really, the government's overreacting all over the globe. Um, too many people are getting their news and information from unreliable sources. These notions I just shared with you, they're all bullshit. Yep, I'm sorry, there's no other way to put it. It's bullshit. Bad information that could shape behavior that puts lives at risk. It's that simple. You should be getting your news and information about this topic directly from health officials. The problem is that too many of those health officials are using traditional methods to get the word out. Their words are being filtered by the news media, some of whom are doing a great job, right? while others, frankly, not so much. With the coronavirus or COVID-19 global pandemic, health officials should be using video brand journalism to get their message out to the public. It's that simple. No situation better illustrates my point about the importance of cutting out the middleman, the traditional media, and speaking directly to the public than the coronavirus global pandemic that we face. I'm operating from the premise that health officials are wanting to change the behavior of the public to limit the spread of the virus. They don't want to panic people, but they do want to shift people's behavior. I want to be very clear that I am not suggesting that health officials ignore traditional media in getting their messages out to the public. I am not saying that at all. They're already doing that, right? What I am saying is they should not rely entirely on the traditional media to get their messages out to the public. Health officials should speak directly to the public using all platforms available to them. They should be using video brand journalism to provide the public news that the public can use. Let me say that again. Health officials should be deploying video brand journalism to provide the public news that they can use. It is that simple, but they're not doing it. Instead, they're relying on elected officials, news media, and an educated public. What they're currently doing isn't working as well as it could. It could be a lot better with some simple, direct 
communications. There is confusion, clutter, and frankly, misinformation out there in the public, in part because of the nature of traditional media. When there, when there is conflicting information to the traditional media, you want to be able to empower the public to come directly to you, to the source, right? And that's what's missing. The goal of their communications is to shape the behavior of hundreds of millions of people because through collective action, we can save lives for those at greater risk. I can't tell you how many conversations I've had with people who are clearly relying on bad information they're getting from traditional sources. It is so frustrating. To get control of the pandemic and to save lives, public health officials have to influence the behavior of all of us, everyone, the masses. To do that, they need to communicate clearly and simply to the public. Instead of producing simple to understand videos and other shareable content directly with the public, health officials, public and private, are sharing lots of words on computer screens. They're holding press briefings and they're writing press releases, hoping that the media gets it right. What is needed is more shareable content that children to adults of all ages will understand. When I did a quick review of my local health departments, the hospital systems here in St. Louis and the CDC, I found them all lacking when it comes to basic communications. All of them. The World Health Organization is doing the best job overall from a communications perspective. They have a presence on all platforms, from TikTok to YouTube. Their content is visually appealing, simple to understand, and easy to share. They have informational video explainers like whiteboard animations that go into some detail level about the, about the virus. The local agencies and the private providers should be using that content right up front on their platforms if they're not going to create their own content. The local health department's pages look, frankly, like you would have expected them to look the first day that they went on the World Wide Web in the 1990s. But it's 2020. Most people consume the internet from a mobile device. Video is so much more important than a bunch of words on a screen. I hate to say it, but people don't read. They watch videos and they look at pictures. If you navigate through the local health department pages, you can find some helpful information, but you have to dig and you have to read a lot. This is a great PDF that the city health department did. I'm not sure if they shared it via social, but they should. It's the kind of thing that would be helpful as a short video. And it wouldn't be difficult or expensive to produce. You could do it all on a cell phone. St. Louis County's page has improved over the last week, but it looks more like it was driven by trying to help with the election of the county executive than providing useful shareable content that will alter people's behavior or prevent the spread of the coronavirus. The CDC website is better than the local health departments. It's simply laid out. It's lacking video as well, which is unfortunate, but it has the information. It just isn't as user-friendly or as accessible as it could be. And let's be clear, it should be. The healthcare they provide is to prevent the spread of the disease. They do that through communication. Our local hospital systems, which have big communication teams, haven't done much better when it comes to the direct communication piece. The big hospital systems are relying on traditional media to carry their message. They're even buying ads in the newspaper and doing joint articles. That's a step in the right direction on the collaboration side, but it's too old media in my book. I'd add digital to that mix. Everyone, including seniors, are on Facebook. If you posted a helpful video, they would see it and they would share it with their grandchildren. Trust me. The Mercy Health System in St. Louis is doing drive-by testing, but they haven't done a great job of telling that story themselves. They've relied almost entirely on traditional media. If you go to mercy.net, you will see a COVID-19 learn more button, as well as a button that says, Mercy continues to respond to COVID-19, see latest updates. The latest update is a lot of text on a screen. You have to click three screens to get to the testing information. When I started to look for their information, I actually followed a link from a news article to the wrong Mercy Health System that a journalist erroneously included in their article. Mercy.com takes you to a different system than Mercy.net. It is really confusing and an example of why they should be sharing their own news. All the more reason to be building your direct storytelling audience if you're doing PR for Mercy. If I were them, I would hire a multimedia journalist today 
and have him or her doing packaged news stories for the front page of their website. Another option is to have your communication uh, team do interviews with doctors on their cell phones and post them directly to your website. Health officials should be posting helpful news stories daily during this crisis. They should be building an audience that allows them to reach the largest number of people quickly. I'd also recommend that they collect email addresses to send updates to people. I'd push news out there to these subscribers who will in turn push it out to others. All of the media will sign up. I guarantee all of the media will sign up to follow them right away. And then they'll be informing the public and the media at the same time like we did at the Cardinals. Well, I wanna be very clear that I value everything the health professionals are doing to help our community. I must point out the gap in their approach to communicating during this critical time. They are stuck in the past with their approach. Their PR teams should take a more modern approach as it could help them with their mission of educating the public about what to do. It will also train the public to come to them first for the information, which will be hugely helpful in the future. Get the facts and information into the hands of the public right away. Use every means possible. Use your website. Make sure it's mobile friendly. Use YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, Pinterest, traditional media, press releases, use all of it. But tell your story first and foremost because we live in the era of search and we all want to go directly to the source to get our information. I'm trying to think about the best way to say this. Why would you leave it to a clunky 20th century model um, of giving it to traditional media to give to the public when we live in the 21st century and you can go directly to your target audience? Why would you do that? Communicate directly first and give it to the media. Do both. But most importantly, communicate directly in a way that your audience consumes content. You're the ultimate authority and the public needs to hear directly from you. And you need to tailor your communication in a way that the public will consume it. Don't make it an academic medical journal article. Fewer words, more pictures, use video. In your absence, the public will listen to Sean Hannity, talk radio, and their coworker at the water cooler. Let me tell you, that is a recipe for misinformation and confusion. Communicate directly, use brand journalism, and please use video. Brand journalism is exactly what it sounds like. Tell your story yourself, but from your own unique point of view. Tell it unfiltered, get the facts right, and make your story relevant to the audience. Give them the news that they can use. It can save lives because you can shift the collective behavior um, if they hear directly from you. Before I leave you, I wanna share a great example of excellent health communications that is accessible and shareable. The Regional Health Commission has launched beyondpainstl.com, an effort to help people with chronic pain. It is a beautiful website with short animated videos that are easy to understand and are designed to be shared. It is a model for how health professionals can communicate clearly to an audience. It is news that the public can use. It is a good example of how health professionals can use communication to help further a clinical mission. My friends, please know that I chose this provocative topic on purpose. I'm sharing my point of view on this because I want to help. I'm grateful to everyone in the healthcare community that are working tirelessly to combat the spread of the coronavirus. But I'm equally frustrated that the communications approach that they've been taking has been counterproductive to their mission to influence the behavior of millions of people around the world. I'm hopeful that this video will help those responsible for public communication at both public and private health providers improve the dissemination of information to the public. Start communicating directly. Please start today. I'm happy to volunteer to help you in any way that I can. I stand ready to help you for free with whatever you need. Thank you for what you're doing to help people. And until next time, stay healthy and stay story smart.